M61 Vulcan. The M61 Vulcan is a hydraulically or pneumatically driven, six-barrel, air-cooled, electrically fired Gatling-style rotary cannon which fires 20 mm rounds at an extremely high rate. The M61 and its derivatives have been the principal cannon armament of United States military fixed-wing aircraft for 50 years. The M61 was originally produced by General Electric. After several mergers and acquisitions, it is currently produced by General Dynamics. At the end of World War II, the United States Army Air Forces began to consider new directions for future military aircraft guns. The higher speeds of jet powered fighter aircraft meant that achieving an effective number of hits would be extremely difficult without a much higher volume of fire. While captured German designs showed the potential of the single barrel revolver cannon, the practical rate of fire of such a design was still limited by ammunition feed and barrel wear concerns. The Army wanted something better, combining extremely high rate of fire with exceptional reliability. In 1947, the Air Force became a separate branch of the military. The new Air Force made a request for a new aircraft gun. A lesson of World War II air combat was that German, Italian, and Japanese fighters could attack American aircraft from long range with their cannon main armament. American fighters with 50 calories main armament, such as the P-51 and P-47, had to be close to the enemy in order to hit and damage enemy aircraft. The 20mm Hispano cannon carried by the P-38 and P-61, while formidable against propeller-driven planes, had a relatively low rate of fire in the age of jets, while other cannons were notoriously unreliable. In response to this requirement, the armament division of General Electric resurrected an old idea. The multi-barrel Gatling gun. The original Gatling gun had fallen out of favor because of the need for an external power source to rotate the barrel assembly, but the new generation of turbojet-powered fighters offered sufficient electric power to operate the gun, and electric operation was more reliable than gas-operated reloading. With multiple barrels, the rate of fire per barrel could be lower than a single-barrel revolver cannon while providing a greater overall rate of fire. The idea of powering a Gatling gun from an external electric power source was not a novel idea at the end of World War II, as Richard Jordan Gatling himself had done just that with a patent he filed in 1893, with a similar, but powered either by the aircraft engine or an electric motor, 12-barreled Fokker Lehmberger aircraft rotary machine gun under development during World War I by the German Empire. In 1946, the Army issued General Electric a contract for Project Vulcan, a six-barrel weapon capable of firing 7,200 rounds per minute. Although European designers were moving towards heavier 30mm weapons for better hitting power, the U.S. initially concentrated on a powerful cartridge designed for a pre-war anti-tank rifle, expecting that the cartridge's high muscle velocity would be beneficial for improving hit ratios on high-speed targets. The first GE prototypes of the caliber T-45 were ground-fired in 1949, it achieved 2,500 revolutions per minute, which was increased to 4,000 revolutions per minute by 1950. By the early 1950s, the USAF decided that high velocity alone might not be sufficient to ensure target destruction and tested 20mm and 27mm alternatives based on the caliber cartridge. These variants of the T-45 were known as the T-171 and T-150 respectively, and were first tested in 1952. Eventually, the standard 20x102mm cartridge was determined to have the desired balance of projectile-slash-explosive mass and muzzle velocity, resulting in an optimum balance of range, accuracy and kinetic energy on target. The development of the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter revealed that the T-171 Vulcan suffered problems with its linked ammunition, being prone to misfeed and presenting a foreign object damage hazard with discarded links. A linkless ammunition feed system was developed for the upgraded M61A1, which subsequently became the standard cannon armament of U.S. fighters. In 1993, General Electric sold its aerospace division, including GE armament systems along with the design and production tooling for the M61 and GE's other rotary cannon, to Martin Marietta. After Martin's merger with Lockheed, the rotary cannon became the responsibility of Lockheed Martin Armament Systems. Lockheed Martin Armament Systems was later acquired by General Dynamics, who currently produce the M61 and its variants. Each of the cannon's six barrels fires once in turn during each revolution of the barrel cluster. The multiple barrels provide both a very high rate of fire, around 100 rounds per second, and contribute to prolonged weapon life by minimizing barrel erosion and heat generation. 
Mean time between jams or failures is in excess of 10,000 rounds, making it an extremely reliable weapon. The success of the Vulcan project and its subsequent progeny, the very high-speed Gatling gun, has led to guns of the same configuration being referred to as Vulcan cannon, which can sometimes confuse nomenclature on the subject. Most aircraft versions of the M61 are hydraulically driven and electrically primed. The gun rotor, barrel assembly and ammunition feed system are rotated via hydraulic drive motor through a system of flexible drive shafts. The round is fired by an electric priming system where an electric current from a firing lead passes through the firing pin to the primer as each round is rotated into the firing position. The self-powered version, the GAL-4, is gas-operated, tapping gun gas from three of the six barrels to operate the gun gas-driven mechanism. The self-powered Vulcan weighs about more than its electric counterpart, but requires no external power source to operate, except for an electric, inertia starter to initiate gun rotation allowing the first rounds to be chambered and fired. The initial M61 used linked, belted ammunition, but the ejection of spent links created considerable problems. The original weapon was soon replaced by the M61A1, with a linkless feed system. Depending on the application, the feed system can be either single-ended or double-ended. A disadvantage of the M61 is that the bulk of the weapon, its feed system, and ammunition drum makes it difficult to fit it into a densely packed airframe. The feed system must be custom designed for each application, adding to the complete weapon. Most aircraft installations are double-ended, because the ejection of empty cartridges can cause a foreign object damage hazard for jet engines and because the retention of spent cases assists in maintaining the center of gravity of the aircraft. The first aircraft to carry the M61A1 was the C model of the F-104, starting in 1959. A lighter version of the Vulcan developed for use on the F-22 Raptor, designated M61A2, is mechanically the same as the M61A1, but with thinner barrels to reduce overall weight to. The rotor and housing have also been modified to remove any piece of metal not absolutely needed for operation and replaces some metal components with lighter weight materials. The FA-18E-F Super Hornet also uses this version. The Vulcan's rate of fire is typically 6,000 rounds per minute, although some versions are limited to a lower rate, and others have a selectable rate of fire of either 4,000 or 6,000 rounds per minute. The M61A2's lighter barrels allow a somewhat higher rate of fire, up to 6,600 rounds per minute. Practically no powered rotary cannon is supplied with sufficient ammunition for a full minute of firing. Due to its weight dot in order to avoid using the few hundred rounds carried all at once, a burst controller is generally used to limit the number of rounds fired at each trigger pull. Bursts of from 2 or 3 up to 40 or 50 can be selected. The size of the airframe and available internal space limits the size of the ammunition drum and thus limits the ammunition capacity. Until the late 1980s, the M61 primarily used the M50 series of ammunition in various types typically firing a projectile at a muzzle velocity of about. A variety of armor-piercing incendiary, high-explosive incendiary, and training rounds are available. The M246 ATSD is the primary round for use against aerial targets. The new PGU-28-B round was developed in the mid-1980s. It is a semi-armor-piercing high-explosive incendiary round, providing improvements in range, accuracy, and power over the preceding M56A3 Hay round. PGU-28-B is a low drag round designed to reduce in-flight drag and deceleration, and has a slightly increased muzzle velocity of. However, the PGU-28-B has not been without problems. A 2000 USAF safety report noted 24 premature detonation mishaps in 12 years with the SAP Hay round, compared to only two such mishaps in the entire recorded history of them 56 round. The report estimated that the current PGU-28-B had a potential failure rate 80 times higher than USAF standards permit. Due to safety issues, it was limited to emergency wartime use in 2000. The main types of combat rounds and their main characteristics are listed in the table below. The Vulcan first entered aerial combat on April 4, 1965 when four North Vietnamese Air Force MiG-17s attacked a force of 10 escorting North American F-100 Super Sabres and 48 Vulcan armed and bomb-laden F-105 Thunder Chiefs, shooting down two of the latter. The MiG leader, Captain Tran Han, and the only survivor from the four MiGs, reported that U.S. jets had pursued them and that F-105s had shot down three of his aircraft, killing Lieutenants Pham Yai, Le Min Huan, 
and Tranwin Nam. Captain Donald Kilgus piloting an F-100 received an official probable kill with his four M39 20mm cannons during the engagement, however no other U.S. pilot reported destroying any MiGs during the battle, leaving open the plausibility that at least two of the MiG-17s may have been downed by their own anti-aircraft fire. The first confirmed Vulcan gun kill occurred on June 29, 1966 when Major Fred Tracy, flying his F-105 Thunder Chief with the 421st TFS, fired 200 rounds of 20 Minto a MiG-17 that had just fired a 23mm shell through one side of his cockpit and which exited out the other side. When then Voff MiG flew in front of him after making his pass, Major Tracy opened fire on him. The gun was installed in the Air Force's A-7D version of the LTBA-7 Corsair II where it replaced the earlier United States Navy A-7's Colt Mk-12 cannon and was adopted by the Navy on the A-7C and A-7E. It was integrated into the newer F-4E Phantom II variants. The F-4 was originally designed without a cannon as it was believed that missiles had made guns obsolete. Combat experience in Vietnam showed that a gun could be more effective than guided missiles in many combat situations and that an externally carried gun pod was less effective than an internal gun. The first generation of gun pods such as the Su-16 were notoriated with the sights of the fighter. The improved pods were self-powered and properly synchronized to the sights. The next generation of fighters built post-Vietnam incorporated the M61 gun internally. The Vulcan was later fitted into the weapons bay of some Convair F-106 Delta Dart and General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark models. It was also adopted as standard in the teen series air superiority fighters, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon and McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet. Other aircraft include the Italian-slash-Brazilian AMX International AMX, and the F-22 Raptor. It was fitted in a side-firing installation on the Fairchild AC-119 and some marks of the Lockheed AC-130 gunships, and was used in the tail turrets of both the Convair B-58 Hustler and Boeing B-52H Strato Fortress bombers. Japan's Mitsubishi F-1 carried one internally mounted M61A1 Vulcan with 750 rounds. Two gun pod versions, the Su-16-A and improved Su-23-A were developed in the 1960s, often used on gunless versions of the F-4. The Su-16-A uses the electric M61A1 with a ram air turbine to power the motor. This proved to cause serious aerodynamic drag at higher speeds, while speeds under did not provide enough airflow for the maximum rate of fire. The subsequent Su-23-A uses the GAL-4-A self-powered Vulcan, with an electric inertia starter to bring it up to speed. Both pods ejected empty cases and unfired rounds rather than retaining them. Both pods contained 1,200 rounds of ammunition, with a loaded weight of respectively. During service in the Vietnam War, the pods proved to be relatively inaccurate. The pylon mounting was not rigid enough to prevent deflection when firing, and repeated use would misalign the pod on its pylon, making matters worse. A variant with much shorter barrels, designated the M195, was also developed for use on the M35 armament subsystem for use on the AH-1G Cobra helicopter. This variant fed from ammunition boxes fitted to the landing skid and was developed to provide the AH-1 helicopter with a longer-range suppressive fire system before the adoption of the M97 universal turret mounting the M197 cannon. The M61 is also the basis of the U.S. Navy MK-15 phalanx close-in weapon system and the M163 that's Vulcan air defense system using the M168 variant. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.